My name is Sam Gelman. I'm a professor of chemistry here at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. My son Ben sang at NYC for many years, and so I'm very happy to be able to talk about a possible connection between science and music here today. So, if you think about music, it's um, a huge amount of creativity, um, a huge variation in possibilities that all arises from just a few notes. Now, not all the notes are drawn here because there are sharps and flats, but we know that there's a limited number of notes, and yet you can get Palestrina, you can get Bach, you can get Mozart, you can get um, Ives, you can get Lady Gaga, all from different combinations of these notes. And we know that there are many, many more combinations that don't even exist yet, that maybe some of you will come up with someday. That's not so different from being a chemist. We also work from a limited set of building blocks. They're the elements. They're all shown here on this periodic table. At first, it looks more complicated than notes because there are maybe a, few, a little more than 100 elements. But the fact is, a lot of these elements don't really exist unless humans make them and they don't hang around for very long. Others of them are very uncommon on Earth, so we don't use them all that often. Most of the stuff in the world around us is made up of a relatively small number of elements. So here's the way we draw a molecule or indicate the structure in the cartoon form of the molecule that we call a set of benefits. So this is Tylenol. Probably you've all taken it at some point or another. And it's made up of just four elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. One way to indicate the structure is drawn here. A more common way, it looks kind of simpler, is drawn here. We don't bother to draw the carbon anymore because carbon is the most common element in organic chemistry, the kind of chemistry I study. It's the most common element in living, in the molecules of living organisms. And so we just make the carbon the points at which two lines connect. Here are a couple of other molecules that you might also have encountered. Aspirin, ibuprofen, all of these make us feel better when we're not feeling so well. These two guys are just carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but put together in somewhat different ways from this guy. So all that variation, all that actual utility from these different combinations. There's a huge range of variation open to us. There's many more molecules that don't exist yet. Again, maybe some of you will invent them someday that might be really useful. It's been shown that there aren't enough atoms in the entire universe to build all the possible combinations that we can imagine based on the periodic table, just one copy each. So there's a huge number of possibilities and there's a lot of good for human beings that can come from those possibilities as there's a lot of good for human beings that can come in the form of spiritual sustenance from combining these notes in different ways.